She was once the most famous woman in the Arctic. She was wealthy. Her fortune was reindeer. The miners on the beach wanted to marry her. The Yankee whaling ships and the missionaries did business with her. Newspapers in the gold rush town of Nome wrote stories about her. As long as her herds flourish, she prevailed. But predators stalk this land. They hide in the shadows, waiting for moments of weakness. Always on guard against them, she fought to protect her deer. They call her by different names, but to the Eskimos, she is remembered as Sinrock Mary, the reindeer queen of Alaska. Strangest thing happened. I'm driving my truck down that teller road, and you know the fog comes in really heavy out there. After a while, I hear noises, but I don't see nothing. Then in my headlights, I see reindeer, a lot of them. But when the fog goes away, the deer is gone. I get to tell her and I ask about the reindeer. My friends just laugh. They say, there's no reindeer out there this time of the year. They tell me it must have been Sinrock Mary's herd. That ghost herd. Sinrock Mary died over 40 years ago here at Unalakleet. Her cabin stands boarded up against winds from the Bering Sea. At one time from her windows, she could watch the reindeer foraging on the hills. The deer have long since gone. Today, only a few are alive who remember Mary living here. She was an old woman then, with white hair and tattoos on her chin. Smoking her long leaf tobacco, she talked to her grandchildren, telling stories about times long ago. Like, uh, she was big. She was sitting down and we, me and my older sister had a lot of room on her lap. That was when we first get to really know her, really get to understand that she was other grandma. I know she had curly hair. That's when we first noticed the difference between your own hair and your grandma's hair, like when it was just curly, it, it make you wonder, I wonder how she could have curly hair. And here she was half-breed Russian. Mary was 10 years old in 1867 when Russia sold Alaska to the United States. Russia claimed the territory for over a hundred years. For much of that time, the only Russians to come to Alaska were merchants and fur traders. These men came to make money and they came without women. When their contracts with the fur companies expired, most returned to Russia, leaving behind an ever-growing population of mixed blood children. Mary's father was one of these Russians. As a child, Mary lived with her mother in St. Michael, a fortified trading post where foreign ships would drop anchor. Mary's world was filled with characters off these ships who gathered at the trading post. Yankee whalers, fur trappers, rum runners, and missionaries. Mary listened to their words and watched their strange ways. By the time she was in her teens, she could speak Russian and English besides her native Inupiat and other native dialects. <laughs> 